CataractCoach.com podcast series, episode number 55, with Dr. Ashraf Armia from Egypt. Welcome back to the Cataract Coach podcast. And today, my very special guest is Dr. Armia from Egypt. You've seen him on the podium in many meetings. In fact, I was just in Florida at the Telling It Like It Is meeting run by Dr. Bob Yosher. And you've been a part of that meeting for many years. Exactly. So welcome, exactly. welcome to our podcast. Thank you for doing this. I'm really honored that uh, you are selecting me to be one of your broadcast uh, uh, selections. This is a great honor for me. So thank you so much, Uday. Oh, my pleasure. Now tell me, how did you get so involved in ophthalmology teaching? Uh, this is a very long story, Uday. Very long story. You, 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 uh, I don't know if you know that I come from a family of ophthalmologists. My father is a great surgeon, ophthalmologist, and uh, I own everything uh, of what I have now to my father. He teach me everything. Uh, so he, he, he used to take me to uh, the clinic and the operation before I entered the medical school, since the secondary school. So oh, since, I, you were, since you were a child. Since I was a child, I think I think in 19, uh, uh, 1984, like, like this. So I was a really child, and uh, but he made me love his way in dealing with patients. I was so happy. He was he's so kind, and I I learned from him how to be kind person, really. Uh, so I I didn't thought that I was going to be anything in life except like my father. Yeah, that's so important. To be kind to patients is so important. The patients don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Exactly. This is so true. Uh, so uh, he taught me, uh, come. Uh, he even let me sterilize with him before medical school in his operation. Wow. Can you imagine this? I, I can't remember. I, I cannot forget the time that he told me, go do what I'm doing in sterilization and come to me. You are just going to help me. At that era, it was an intracapsular with a six uh, silk suture. Very long, very long time. Uh, with the cry, you, 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 you definitely yes. are, you re remember this. So, since this, I, um, I, I got fond of ophthalmology and I, uh, I, I, I want to be like my father. I want to be famous like my father. Oh, I love that. Exactly. So everything uh, I'm doing now, I am thinking how he was doing, and I'm imitating the same. Even my voice, the same as he is he was doing. So big influence on you. But but you're also but you've taken to the next level. You're of course a fa fantastic ophthalmologist, great talent surgeon, but now you're like a worldwide professor. I've seen you in many countries. Uh, since I, I I will tell the story because no one uh, 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 know the story since uh, 2014 uh, uh, I took the decision to be on the international level. I want to be uh, not an ordinary ophthalmologist. I want to be more and more in the international level, and I want to transform all um, I know to everyone worldwide. So, the, be, why? Because I am very fond of education, and um, I want to teach. Uh, I want to spread my knowledge. Um, as uh, always, my father told me, as much as you are going to teach, as much you are going uh, to be happy. Right, 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 right. So this well, is what. There's, there's another important topic too: is the more I teach, the more I learn. I mean, to teach a topic, you must truly learn it inside and out. To prepare a topic, you read a lot. Right. And you read from everyone. And you learn from everyone you are preparing your talk to. So it's like teaching yourself from everyone. On the podium, very important to, uh, to, uh, to read the eyes of the people. If they, you are right. going... You are going to interact good. with the audience, see where the audience, see how they enjoy it. Are they, are they losing interest? Are they gaining interest? Do they have questions? As much as you are traveling, you are learning a lot from everyone. Right. Always, I, 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 I believe that everyone has a talent and you should know all the talents of everyone. You have one talent, but right. everyone has a talent. 
So 10 years ago, you just decided, I'm going to be an international teacher for ophthalmology. Exactly. And you did it. But that seems like such an impossible task. It seems so difficult. How do you achieve this? This is what I, I, I push everyone now to do what I'm doing. It just needs to know your way, to prepare the way in the perfect way, educate yourself more and more, love people you are dealing with, and the most important, build a team. Mm -hmm. Building a teamwork can let you do the impossible. And I, I must thank everyone helping me since 2014. Uh, it was, it, for me, it was like, um, like a big luck. I met most of the KOLs in the world. So the key and opinion I, leaders. Key opinion leaders, really. Yes. I can say the names because they deserve it. Since I met Arthur Kami, Shiraz Dea, Francesco Caronis, Lucio Parato, Bobby Osher, uh, and from Egypt, Professor Fatih Fawzi. Yes. This it changed my life in the way of thinking in ophthalmology, how to build it in the more international level. Because you know that in our region, Middle East, it's not the, the way that the world uh, talk about ophthalmology. It's a different way, completely different way. Mm -hmm. So because of these people, I start to change how I'm thinking about ophthalmology. And when I built this huge uh, teamwork, we start to uh, innovate a lot of way of teaching and education. Uh, building a lot of courses, building a lot of team uh, in many meetings. So we are attracting the young ophthalmologists, which is the most important people, in my opinion. The right, that's the, fu the future of our specialty are the young ophthalmologists, for sure. This is so true. In, um, during the, you know that during the corona time, everyone stays at home. Right. At that time, I cannot stay at home. I, I, don't, I, I don't like this way. So I thought to build a new society for teaching online. And it was the first time to do, do something like this. Wow. We created Gerso. Not only me, but me, Sunil Shah, Magid Nisi from UK. And we already built a society. Gerso was a huge work for two years. Tell we me what GERSO stands for, G-E-R-S-O, what does it stand for? Global, uh, GERSO, Global Education for Ophthalmology Education. It's, uh, it's a society for education, virtual, and wow. for two levels, the young ophthalmologist and the intermediate and advanced. And at that time, you know that everyone was staying at home, no one is working, everyone has a good time. So when I when I attach it uh, to uh, get used get, uh, to uh, to ask someone from the states, I got a lot from the states, a lot from Europe, a lot from South America, and everyone was willing to help. So we built a huge community in Gerso, mm -hmm. and in two years, we made around fifty-two meetings. Wow! Every it's every other week there's a meeting. Every month we have two meetings. Right. And already recorded and all online. Wow, it's a great library now. Exactly. So this was the first platform for education for young ophthalmologists, which I really fond of. I love teaching young ophthalmologists because I learn a lot from young ophthalmologists. Sure. And they, yes, definitely. They have a lot. You know, the young since 10 years is different than the young from nowadays mm -hmm. they don't think like each other at all they have they now they are more fast more in the technology they want to listen a lot they want to do more right so no no for sure it's, it's a different approach the new generation does things differently they they want to have they want to yeah they they consume content very quickly exactly and they also learn very quickly, better than, better than my generation, for sure. Exactly. And you should know what they need to deliver the knowledge. Mm -hmm. 
this is very important so this is this is how i am happy uh, from what i'm doing um, and a lot i i will i can say more and more because we are building building two new societies in our region middle east and north africa because i want this region everyone to know that we have huge uh, knowledge huge experience yeah. and resources uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of day. Uh, so uh, to, uh, we are finishing uh, two societies, one in Egypt. Soon it will be announced for education. Wow. And one in North Africa, in Tunisia. It will be announced by this week. Uh, just for education for young ophthalmologists. Well, on fantastic. the level of surgery. Yes. That is fantastic. I, be, I have the same philosophy of you, as you. You have to nurture and help the next generation because they're going to do things that are bigger and better than we ever even dreamed about and so if we can help them along the way get our knowledge to them and they'll take it to the next level totally true you know i learned i learned a lot from your videos of how you are teaching you are building the knowledge right you have your own way i can read yes, it for sure. I, yes and uh, what you are pressing on the video this is very crucial. This is what I'm learning from this, uh, this technique in teaching people. You don't talk too much, but you press on what you want to deliver. Right. This is you. No, no, for sure. Yeah, for sure. My other goal in cataract coaches, I want to give away all the secrets. Back exactly. when I was doing my training more than 20 years ago, you know, a lot of surgeons were a little bit secretive and didn't tell you all the things, all the little tricks, all the little techniques. I give everything away. If you watch Cataract Coach, you will absolutely, in, in due course, have my entire brain when it comes to cataract surgery. I'll give you everything I know. Everyone I know watching what Cataract Coach, young or adult. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised it became incredibly popular. Like when I saw you recently in Dubai at the EPOMEC meeting, I couldn't believe I took hundreds of selfies with young ophthalmologists. Hundreds, maybe even a thousand selfies. It was unbelievable. Exactly. Exactly. You are very famous, by the way. Very yeah. famous everywhere. And be, because you you teach uh, sincerely. Right. No, no, this, for sure. Now, how do you do the next step? So I saw you so many years in a row at this big meeting for, for Dr. Osher. How do you get start with him do you just email him and say hey dr osher i'd love to present at your meeting or for a, if my audience right now there's an ophthalmologist who's listening who was like you 10 years ago and says you know i want to present at a meeting like this how do i get my foot in the door how do i get started since 2016 i sent the first video to bobby osher for the esrs in europe you know that he select only 20 videos from thousands right. of and the, and for the in 2016 he, he selected my video for one of the 20. so i was very happy at that time we didn't have the chance because it's a no it's a bobby osher yes i am i'm, I'm le learning a lot from him i can see him from far okay but i don't know him right. in 2017 i sent another video and it got selected at wow. that time he 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 started to talk to with me ashraf you are different you, you have your own test in uh, cases and you have your own education points. So my videos get selected from 2016 till 2023. Every year I have a video of the 20 with the Bobby Osher uh, during wow. the year. Every year for eight wow. years I think now. In 2019, he told me, Ashraf, I need you in my meeting in telling it like it is fantastic i wow. was, you cannot so imagine I, how i was happy because i want to be just beside him to learn more and more from him right no for sure listen he, he's obviously an idol for me he's my podcast guest number one from way back when i first started the podcast because he's the godfather of ophthalmic surgical video he's the true innovator here he started this 1985 i think yes unbelievable track record 40 plus years of the video journal of cataract refractive and now glaucoma surgery too no an incredible an incredible man so much to learn from him this is true and at that time he told me you are going to present 
and you are going to teach in the uh, courses during the meeting. So yeah, every but... year, yes. So when I finished the first year, he told me, you, you did a great job. I want you every year. Wow. So, so I was with him, yes, like this. And uh, every year, the, the relation become more and more close and uh, uh, more sincere. And uh, he's, a, he's a wonderful person. He, he's a great man and uh, he deserves everything. Really, he's the one. Right. Well, my favorite part of him is that he does things his way, which is what I'm so proud of. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't conform to all the rules or the suggestions. He has his way of doing it, which is, to me, it's so brilliant. And so many people love to learn from him. He's he's made me, for sure, a better surgeon. This is true. He he knows he knows what is defect to feel, to feel it. Right. Right, right. And if you if you if you listen to him every year in his meetings, you are going to find that he's adding more and more. He he is not the man that he's repeat himself. And no, even yeah. the same technology, the, even the same problem, he can present it by two ways. Right, right, right. So he's talented. He's really talented. So, so, which other meetings are you involved in internationally? So you obviously come to the telling it meeting with with Dr. Osher. I so, see. I see you at ASCRS. AAO, ESCRS, exactly. I was talking to Ipomec. Which other meetings are you are you doing? Since 2014, as I told you, I, I decided to go internationally. So I started with the ESRS in Europe to send instruction courses and then accepted. So strange. It was first time. Then the ESRS in America accepted. Europe accepted more and more courses. And then I started to build a, a team, as I told you, from different uh, countries. So we present courses together. So we can reach in the ESRS in Europe from five to six courses. Wow. Except. Ask us the same, American Academy the same. Then people, when they saw me a lot and uh, they told me, come, we need you in the skill transfers courses in the ESRS and the AO. Oh, so I started to be in, 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 uh, involved in both, in the ASRS and the academy in the skill transfers courses also, beside the instruction course. Because um, I, 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 I can say, if say whatever the number, if we can say that we have 1,000 ophthalmologists all over the world, I can say that half of them need education and skill transfer in surgery sure. they cannot re uh, they cannot have this you should you should dedicate i can say one third of your time for education for young ophthalmologists this is very crucial because i always say i don't know maybe when i become older who is going to do the cataract surgery for me maybe one of them and if he's not skilled <laughs> he's not going to be He's not going to be have a good results. So why? If if I if I if I can if I what I can do, everyone can do. Right. This is this is normal. This is you have the same talent. You are humans, but as you build your talent, you are going to do the same. If you didn't build your talent, you are not going to be the same. But everyone can do the same. No, no, great points. I think the skills transfers courses are actually important to get some that hands-on training. If you want to learn an advanced technique, let's say like intrascleral haptic fixation, or you want to learn even DMEC, it's so much easier to have uh, someone who's experienced sitting next to you in a wet lab and saying, here's a little trick. Let me show you this. So it's one thing to watch a video, which obviously we all learn by watching videos, but it's even another level to have the hands-on with an instructor next to you. And very important when you teach, teach your point of teaching. Don't, 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 don't present as you are doing what is impossible. Right. Because, you, because nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Teach the way you make it easy. How you, it was a difficult and you make it easy and you have this good result. If you didn't teach this point, you didn't teach anything. Mm -hmm. This is nothing. If the audience didn't get points that we are when they are home back home, they can do what you do 
you didn't do anything. They are yeah, not. So you, 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 just have, you have to do more than say it. You have to teach it so that they are effectively they have learned it and their hands can do it also. They are not going to see. They are not coming to cinema with a popcorn. They are, going, they are coming to 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 learn. Right. It's not. A, it's not a, just a movie. No, it's not just a movie. If if the movies and this is what I really uh, experienced from Bobby Osho. If your movies, when you present in the podium, does not have a teaching point, you didn't do anything. Right. You right. For sure. He's also great at one important thing, Doctor Osho, which is doesn't show the perfect cases. Doesn't show a case that it, he shows his complications. I think he's one of the very first surgeons from many decades ago, who surprised the world by going to the podium and showing complications. As much as you work, as much as you're going to have complications. Right. If you don't have a complication, you, you, you are not working. <laughs> right. right, no, for sure. And those yeah. obviously become the most useful videos as the ones to learning how to deal with complications. Like, like you said, if you operate, you're going to have a complication. Whether it's, your, whether it's your hands or the patient's tissues or a combination of both, complications happen. If you operate, you will get complications. To deal with them is another story. Exactly. You know, in Egypt, we can we can work on some different uh, countries like Yemen, uh, Sudan, uh, North Africa. The cataract sense, the sense of the cataract and the capsule and the nucleus is totally different in these countries. Why is that? Tell me. I, I don't know why. When you when, say, for example, when I go to Sudan, uh, Sudanese, Sudanese uh, cataract, it's it's a uh, it's little bit harder. Okay. It's sticky more to the capsule. Hmm. But when you do the polish of the anterior capsule after the cataract, it's an easy to go. But hmm. the the cataract is so sticky to the capsule, different than I, I maybe because more sun, I think so. More sun, more we like. Yes, more pigments maybe because they are deeply pigmented. But when you do light cataract, uh, like light, light iris cataract, it's different than dark pigmented uh, patients. So when I do with the with cataract for uh, North Africa, they some of them have very light irises. It's totally different. It really mm. different. so the sense is different. As much as you work, you are going to feel it. Right. Even the sense of the capsule, the, te the texture of the anterior capsule, it's totally different between countries. This is what I felt when I'm, I'm, when I'm working. Yeah, I think we all realize that as surgeons when we do thousands of surgeries, that there's a spectrum of kind of tissues to expect. Exactly. So, and then certain populations may be different sections on that spectrum. But we've all seen in our clinic patients with the, the, the light-colored irises can have very little post-op inflammation. For some patients who have a darker iris like me may have more post-op inflammation. So you've certainly right. seen it there. Yeah, I, th I think that's actually an important point there. You've got to tailor your technique and what you're doing to the patient population you're at. Similarly, like David Chang has a famous study where he says, okay, he'll go to the he'll go to the, do the Himalayan eye care project. Yes. He's gonna have Sandak Rui to do MSICS, and he's gonna try to do FACO and see which is better. Well, MSICS has better outcomes. So exactly for that population, exactly. the MSICS is better. See, this is the difference. This is really the difference between population. Uh, this is why when you see uh, surgeons working from different countries, even in the videos, you can imagine that you can feel that he's not working the same way I'm working. Yes, he is not working the same way because the cataract or the surgery in this country is different than the cataract in uh, surgery right. in this country. You can feel it when you see a lot of people working from different countries in the videos. You know, when, I didn't, when I was a young ophthalmologist, I didn't understand it. I did not appreciate that. But then with experience, you start thinking like, yeah, you're absolutely right. There are big differences there. Yes. You know, they, one of the most important things that, um, that I'm looking forward in the rest of my life is to build uh ophthalmology world community right that aiming for uh, education and sincere relationship with each other 
we are not just surgeons or uh, doctors. We are humans from the start. Right. right. And if we get close to us, to each other, in this way, we can do huge work. For sure. I think for us in the U.S., I can tell you my own personal experience in the U.S. situation is that I wish a lot of these societies were more inclusive. Because what ends up happening from my outside perspective, in my opinion, is they become little clubs, little cliques. Exactly. And they become a little bit, they become a lot, exclusionary. So it's an unusual situation now, like in the U.S., the both the AAO and the ASCRS it's there's a system of just nominating or bringing your friends into positions of leadership and so for a for a young outsider let's say who's looking at this it seems hopeless like there's any chance of becoming ever involved exactly this is what yes this but is to what... be more inclusive i think is so important to allow these more people to be kind of more involved in your organization but i don't know if that'll happen that, uh, it, 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 it will it will happen sooner or later because it is not important that you bring your friend to the position it's important to bring who deserve the position who right. is willing who is willing to work in a teamwork because without a sincere teamwork nothing can continue nothing can continue and this is this is what i, I was aiming for 10 years now to build a huge, huge, huge uh, global network uh, of very uh, human ophthalmologists that they want to educate and they want to spend some time to educate, not the position, but from inside, the, they are willing to educate. Right. No, all, all such important points here. I mean, this is now. Is there an Egyptian meeting that you're involved in? Uh, I have two Egyptian meeting I am involved in the uh, Research Institute of Ophthalmology meeting, which um, um, I, I, I love. This institute, they they are doing a lot in the research. I respect them, uh, all of them, and for sure, my meeting, which is uh, our meeting, it's a Watani Eye Hospital meeting. It's, uh, it's uh, you know that our hospital is one of the leading hospitals in the region. It's a huge right. hospital. You, yes. are, you are invited uh, this year. It's yeah, I'll, huge, I'll be there later this year in Cairo. It's a huge hospital. It is six floors, 12 eye theater, wow. and another three, uh, four theaters. So it's the total is uh, 16 eye theaters, fully equipped Lomera 700. We have uh, three platforms. We have all the FACO machines, you know. <laughs> you have everything. Uh, number, everything. You are going to see the hospital. You are going to visit it, definitely. We have uh, uh, three, uh, four uh, uh, suites, uh, refractive surgery. We have 24 eye clinics. We have wow. the Research Institute of Ophthalmology also, with the only uh, private institute in the, in the country. Uh, have a research institute uh, approved by the, the Ministry of Health. So I'm very proud to be part of this. And we have our annual meeting. It's a huge meeting. Uh, this is These are the only two meetings because I can't do more than that in Egypt. Yes. <laughs> no, because... so how can, if, if we have a listener or a viewer who's interested in coming to this meeting in Cairo because they want to obviously learn, see your facility, but also enjoy beautiful Cairo, how can From... they get involved? How, how can they learn about your meeting? From outside, from outside Egypt? Yes. Yeah, this is, we are usually announce a website and the website has a registration and also the accommodation for the meeting. And the most, more, it's very easy. And we are, we announced it since uh, before by four months, everything with the, with the company that's responsible for the meeting. And they come easily. The visa to Egypt is very easy and, uh, you can visa on just uh, during arrival. Sure. It's everything is it's very easy in Egypt. Very easy. Well, maybe I can put a link down below for the viewers and the listeners. If you're interested definitely. in, I will see you there. I will be there for sure later this year. Definitely, we'll definitely. Have a great time. Yes, this is well, for sure. 
and um, also um, um, uh, what what we are doing now also that uh, we are trying to connect uh, 18 countries the all the north africa countries and all the middle east under one union to because you know that these countries uh, speak the same language they have a lot of uh, uh, cultural behaviors uh, similar to each other and we have uh, now a global uh, collaboration with these countries under one umbrella that uniting everything in education for young ophthalmologists and also for continuous medical education even for advanced and, and intermediate level well fantastic it sounds like a, a very very great meeting it's gonna i'm sure it'll get better and better every year that's fantastic maybe yes. you can you can do you can do double you can have the meeting live in person but also have it broadcast over the internet exactly this is true Fantastic. So what other projects do you have coming out? What other projects are you working on? Anything exciting? Yes. So obviously, you're teaching a lot, you're traveling a lot, you're on the podium a lot, many countries, you have your own meeting. Uh, you know, since uh, during the, also during the corona, we made uh, we made the idea, me and my friend Cosimo Mazotta. Uh, you know, I, I, I am I'm part of, I'm doing uh, Karate Kona since many years. And okay. we thought that we do a, a book, uh, Karate Kona State of Art. And during that time, everyone was sitting at home. We, so we sent the invitation for people. Everyone accepted. And we made the book in one year. And uh, it's more in the market since one year. And we reached more than 10,000 in one year. Wow. Uh, yes. And it was huge, uh, really huge book. And then after this, we decided uh, another with another editor to do a huge book in cataract surgery. And you are part of this. You are doing that. You are going to write the preface of this book. And we are finalizing the book now. It's uh, more than uh, 1,500 pages. Wow, that's quite the book. More than 135 chapters. Wow. And all the cataract surgeons in the whole world, eminent in this field, are in this book. Yes. All the names you can imagine. And everyone writing his technique by himself and for the first time we uh, made the companies involved in our book so if you need to work uh, you have your own you have an alco machine in your uh, clinic open the chapter of alcon read how you 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 use the alcon like this how to use bush and low how to use all the companies agreed to be with us so oh. we have a, oh, one chapter for just the companies not a commercial way, in an educational way. Oh, that's fantastic. No, for sure. Yes, and uh, we also have the last chapter just for the innovations and what's coming in cataract surgery. Oh, that's exciting. Exactly. Artificial Very intelligence, exciting. nanotechnology, uh, robotic surgery, a lot of chapters in this part, just what's coming in cataract surgery. So, so tell me, what do you what do you think is coming in cataracts? Or you were saying, so robotic, what else we have coming? A, probably AI, virtual AI. reality, augmented yes. reality. What, what's coming? What's coming? What's coming? What's coming is the artificial intelligence in cataract surgery. The, as I uh, as I uh, I expected that they are collecting a huge debt from the normal cataract surgeries, from many surgeons working the same technique so they can build the programs that you can push start and everything can go like this in a very symmetrical way collecting wow. a lot huge data from capsule access huge data from divide and conquer huge data from polishing a lot of things even posterior capsule access they are they are collecting data from poor posterior capsule access so this is what they are doing for the artificial intelligence and cataract surgery. Many companies uh, with many doctors, some in the United States and some in uh, Europe. And I think the chapter will say a lot also in this. I think so. Uh, robotic surgery, it is coming, coming. You know that it's it's uh, now it's uh, in a good way in general surgery and uh, uh, they are uh, they are fasting in this in, in this technology more than ever in UK and USA, even right. bariatric surgery like this. 
But it, so in ophthalmology, it's coming, it's coming. It's very soon. It's very soon. But I think that it go, it's not going to be for not, the beginning was just going to be for the, the classic cases. But more and more, they are trying to do more complicated cases also. Right. If we look at our own clinic, let's say for cataract surgery, more than 90% of the cases are basically routine. Yes. Yes. So maybe you can have a robot, robotic device for the routine cases and then the unusual ones, like you have to do sonicolysis or pupil stretching, then the surgeon can do those individually. This is exactly. What else? Uh, you know, definitely you know that uh, our region, we don't have clinical trials uh, phase one and two. Usually it's not in this region. Uh, I don't know why, but this is what the companies used to, to, not to invade these countries. So uh, this is what of my, one of my dreams that I'm bringing clinical trials to this region. So 2024 for me, it will be a new, uh, new era of this. Wow. Uh, I'm working for clinical trials for, for one company for a new uh, premium uh, uh, presbyopic uh, IOL. This is for the first time in the region. There is no clinical trials phase two. So I'm wow. happy that I'm part of this, yes. And uh, also there is uh, also clinical trial for intravita injection uh, phase three. So uh, from American company. So I'm happy that uh, I'm trying to do this because I want to tell everyone in Egypt or in the region that this can be happen and you can do everything. Just concentrate, focus, build a teamwork, and always dream that all your dreams can come true. Yeah, of course. Like anything else in life, it's, it's, it's hard work. It's people hard sometimes, work. People sometimes say, oh, gosh, you, you seem so lucky. And I said, yes, of course, because the harder I work, the luckier I get. This is true. <laughs> really, I don't I don't sleep a lot. I I, I can I, I can admit this. Uh, I sleep three or four hours. I can. Oh my work. goodness! I can't imagine. I like a good seven hours, eight hours of sleep every night. Uh, I, I I don't have this luxury because I oh. I have a lot of do to do, and uh, right. I want to do. I know it is this too too much, but uh, I love what I'm doing. I really love what I'm doing. Uh, sure. Yes really love what i'm doing and i want everyone to do like this i want so uh, when when i sit with the young ophthalmologist i tell them what i'm doing you are going to be part so usually every time I, I travel to many countries i collect young ophthalmologists who want to do the same and i am building nowadays a global young ophthalmologist to join this huge work well i think that's fantastic to be so inclusive like that, to get the young generation in. I'll tell you, the young generation is bringing an entirely different skill set. The way they approach problems, they think a little bit differently, which I find so refreshing. When I teach the young ophthalmologists the hand-eye coordination, because they probably have grown up playing video games, their hand-eye coordination is spectacular. And they pick things up or learn subtleties very, very quickly. I mean, as you know, when we first started off, we'd watch Dr. Osher's videos on a VHS tape. Exactly, exactly. And now, and now, and now, a young doctor anywhere they go, they got their cell phone in their hand, mobile phone. They can watch a video in high definition anywhere on the planet. And you, you, you know, one of the most important things that I, I, I usually uh, tell the young ophthalmologists: don't leave the data goes away. Record okay. all your videos, right. even if you think it is a straightforward case. It is for 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 you. It is a precious thing. You can save it straight, but sometimes straight cases can yield a complication, and you didn't record it. You, you lost it. You lost it. Right. It's an important thing. Is that there's a difference between a complication and a lesson. The difference is, if you have a complication, you don't learn from it. That's a mistake. But if you learn from it, now it becomes a lesson. Now you've gotten better. Exactly learning and also taking points for your surgeries right if you did wrong after you finish your your surgery you are writing your data so if you did wrong make I, I, for me i do hashtag what i did wrong mm. i can uh, uh, replay again 
under the hashtag this is my wrong right that very makes a lot of sense they yeah. very, you should know what you did wrong not to repeat it yeah that's the best way of certainly the best way of learning and i think all a lot of i think all experienced surgeons like you or like me we record every case and i won't save the video i have the same thumb drive that i just keep recording over but if exactly. there is a case that it's like oh that's a good one let me stop and save that file so we don't write over it again exactly but yeah that's how we learn in fact it, 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 at osha's meeting the first case i presented there we had a we had a one hour best of cataract yes. session the first case is where the capsule breaks on me in a routine case the poster capsule yes it's right open by the way this this uh, one hour it was fantastic the day i i learned for me i learned a lot i learned a lot really yeah, it was, it was fun the, on the podium it was amazing really. oh thank you but you know i think you have a very a very important point that you know if you're a young surgeon you better be recording every one of your cases you don't have to save them all. You, you need to be able to say, hey, oh, wow, something happened. I need to save that video. I need to learn from it. Go back and watch it. Go back and studying it. Like the complication I had, I played the video back at one quarter speed, slow motion, frame by frame to see what exactly happened here to learn. Exactly. Also, what I'm, what are, what of my dreams that I am pushing, you know, that the companies is very important to us. And they are building the technology for us, and we are sharing and building this technology with them by our own experience. But I am dreaming that they they give more and more time and expenses for education for young, more than selling the technology. Right. They can do this, and they have the power to do this. And if we all try to convince them for this, it will be prof profitable for both of them. Young will going to be more experienced by their support and definitely for, for, for them. The companies should have a, ro a big role in education. I, 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 uh, this is what of my dreams uh, that companies go for this way. Some of them, yes, go for this way, but mm -hmm. they need more and more for this. Right, I think that's a great point. So a company can sit there and tell you, okay, for our new FACO machine, have their engineers explain how things work and what the settings are. And let's say, what's like the, what does the vacuum rise time mean? How do you ramp up more? Or, or to explain what is FACO power modulations? What's a burst mode versus a pulse mode and a variable duty cycle and all these, these concepts that their engineers have developed for you yes you have to actually understand and learn and you know what it means example i always give is when i was teaching residents when the residents i said okay tell me about the faco settings you've chosen and the resident says oh i just copied it from the senior resident and i said that's that's a mistake exactly you See? have to understand why you've chosen each of these settings what makes sense here because your hand and your brain is different than the other person. Right. You can modify the settings according to how you handle your probe or how you manage the tools. It cannot right. be the same. It cannot be the same. It can differ for, by 10, 20 degrees, different than him. But the end result, you are going to do the same he's doing, but different settings. It's like driving a car. I'll, I'll change my mirrors and my seat and the steering wheel position differently than you will have your mirrors in your seat to drive the same car. Yes, and you are going to reach the same destination. Right. But your, your way and his way. So No, no, not, of course. Not all the young know this. And some of the young are afraid to change, to do the mistakes. And sometimes they are using the same settings and doing mistakes, and they don't know why they are doing mistakes right sometimes you can work in a very high vacuum 600 650 but he cannot do it and right. he always opened the pacific cup so if you everyone different than each other every right. his, his his foot switch and how he handled the foot different than the other person definitely so no, you should, 
Absolutely. You got to tailor it to the surgeon. Yeah, the, we have a whole 10 part series on FACO fundamentals on cataractcoach.com where you can learn how to choose all these settings. What do all the numbers on the machine mean? What's the physics behind it? What's Poisson's equation for the amount of flow you get depending on the, the, the tube sizing? Exactly. So all this stuff, we, we explain all these things on, on cat. Yeah, I want to give away that information. I want you to choose your settings appropriately like a thinking surgeon. Exactly. It was, it was, that, this is right. This is like not everyone understands this. Yeah, no, for sure. It makes it so much more fun to operate. When you understand all the settings and you can tailor it to just your technique and you make one more important point, you said don't be afraid of changing your settings. But change one thing at a time. Don't change everything all at once. Everything, well, yes. And even when you when you work for different machines, right? Don't build the same way you are doing in one machine to the other machine. Every machine has its technology, right? And if you don't understand different technologies from different machines, you cannot set the machine. Correct. The classic example is if your fake machine is peristaltic vacuum pump versus Venturi vacuum pump. The peristaltic pump, you can set the flow rate you want, but you'll only get the vacuum once you get occlusion. The Venturi, you cannot independently change the flow rate, but you can get instant vacuum even without occlusion. So they're, totally. they're fundamentally different. Totally different, totally different. And they should understand before they change the machine, you should understand your machine. Of course. No, this of is, course, That's important lessons here. And you know also what I may love because you know this is the era of premium IELTS. This is the era of premium IELTS, and everyone wants to to implant premium, 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 premium. If you don't understand that, not every technology for every patient, and some patient yeah. cannot have a premium technology, and others can have. It's not as much as you implanting premium. It's the as much you have patient satisfaction. This is very crucial. Right. And if you didn't plant too much premium, they are not going to say that you are not a good surgeon. No, <laughs> this is not the, the not the issue. It's the issue that how how patient you are trying to make them satisfied. This is the most important. This is because you know the young generation now. They are trying to imitate the uh, professors. And the professors nowadays, yes, they are professors because they the very long time implanting mm -hmm. premium. So you can see you can see now the, the young generation want to implant more and more premium early as early. This is not the issue. This is not the issue to, to implant more premium. No, you implant premium for who deserve premium. <laughs> not everyone, you're going to have a premium while for it. That's a great point. Today, the day we're recording this, my cataractcoach.com video of the day is a patient getting bilateral IOL exchange to <laughs> explant See? trifocal IOLs and go back to monofocal IOLs. This, so is... this proves your point. You have to tailor the IOL and the surgery you do to the patient, the patient's needs, patient expectations. And a trifocal or multifocal lens is not for every patient. Exactly. Also, um, all um, since I started doing hard work, hard work, hard work, I am trying to 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 build uh, a knowledge that you should have an aim for in life. You should have uh, a goal to reach. Don't go in life in ophthalmology that you are just working. This is not the truth. If you want to to, to be different, you should set a goal. And work you, towards a goal. Yes. And when you set a goal and you reach it, set another goal. Don't think that you are reaching everything. You are not going to reach everything. No one, no one can reach everything. But every time you set another goal to have more power to do more and more. If you didn't do this, you are going to reach a point and you stop. You stop learning. You stop want to know more technology. You stop a lot. So once you stop, this is your end. So what are your goals now? What what is what is on your horizon? Three years, five years, ten years? What are you? You must have some very lofty goals. I for my for me, I don't want to stop. 
I am not the person that I, I say that when I reach 60, 65, I'm going to retire. I don't think I'm going to do this. Why? Because my daughter now in the medical school and my son is on the way. And um, they changed me totally, 180 degrees. I now am thinking now to build with them a new concept in a family uh, way of teaching. Hmm. So, yes, uh, my dream, my coming dream that I, I see my daughter on the podium, and I'm learning from her, and my son the same. And we are building th even thoughts. I usually sit with with them and building uh, what's coming in the future, what we are going to build together. So I don't think I'm going to stop if if I don't if I still have life. If I still have life, but I I'm not the person that I'm going to stop. Um, my goal to uh, enter more and more in clinical trials nowadays. This is my. Uh, my dream and uh, what I'm going to do, I want to go more and more in um, in innovations in uh, in uh, in the um, in this part because I think this part is the more educate the more you go deep, the more you are going to be innovative, the more you are going to uh, change uh, in the region that I'm living. Um, I want to uh, I want to make a lot from my for my country. I love Egypt so much, and I, I want to do everything to put Egypt on the scope, to say that he's an Egyptian, he's coming from Egypt. This is, this is really my dream. Uh, uh, this country has a lot, and uh, we have a huge number of excellent, brave surgeons, brave educators. I learned a lot from many educators here in Egypt, and many of my uh, professors, and I want to be to make to, to take Egypt to a higher level on the international level. This is my that is that's fantastic. I have no doubt you will absolutely achieve this. That is really, I, I love a goal like that, and you'll work hard towards that. And there's, yeah, there's no doubt you'll achieve that. That'll be fantastic. I'm, re I'm re yes, I'm really happy for this. And uh, uh, in the coming, in the coming year, year or two. We are building really uh, definitely. You are maybe you are going to be involved in this. Uh, they, this is 100 for sure because uh, it will be a very deep uh, learning skills uh, education of surgeons. We are building a society just increasing skills and education on the level of surgery, not for didactic courses. Right. Hands on. Right. Yeah. The didactic is one thing, hands on is another. Another thing, exactly. And those young surgeons better get a lot of great hands-on because remember, the robots are coming. <laughs> oh, yes. So before this coming. <laughs> well, I think those are those are amazing goals. I'm really, I'm really amazed and I'm very proud of all the work that you've done. I mean, it's a pleasure for me to see you on the podium at so many different meetings in so many different countries. I always learn from your lectures, and I love that you have this goal, this insight, this innovation to make this happen. And I think you'll be really successful. The, 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 the most important that there is people like you, by the way. Why? Because you are example for the young day. And this is the, this fast world nowadays, uh, lack of this. You are an educator, sincere, want to transform the transform the knowledge to everyone right this is becoming nowadays very very few people doing this maybe because it's a fast life maybe because everyone wants to get his achievements but you are example that i am willing to make the young of talmud be like you this is your goal in life. You should be like Oday. You should, when you reach a point that you are more experienced, you should have this goal for your life. Right. To give back, and then now you teach the next generation. Exactly. Exactly, Oday. This is yeah. this is a, this is a lesson should ev 
all young ophthalmologists understand very well. Right. Ophthalmology is a big worldwide family. And actually, actually, actually in some ways, it's a very small family, very tight knit. There's so few ophthalmologists in any country. There's so few ophthalmologists. That's true. Oh. Very few. Very few. Amazing. Well, I look forward to working with you again at upcoming meetings. For sure, I'll be there in Cairo at your at your large meeting later this year. Yes. I encourage any other of our listeners, you want to go to a, an incredible meeting and have a great time and come with me. I'm going to do some tourist stuff and I'm going to see the pyramids and I'm going to see <laughs> the sites. Come, yeah, it'll be, I'll, I'll put a link down below. Please click on the link and you'll learn more about the meeting and we're going to have a great time. Thank you. I appreciate it so much, Ashraf. What an in, in, incredible podcast. Thank you, Uday, so much. I'm really proud and honored to be with you. You are a great uh, mentor for everyone. And I'm really proud to be part of your broadcast. Oh, thank you. And I want to remind my listeners and viewers, remember, we have a new podcast every single week. Check it out. We're on Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google, YouTube, anywhere you find podcasts, we are there. You can listen in the car while you're working out and exercising. And please tell your friends. Remember, too, on cataractcoach.com, the website, we have the full series of the curriculum series. We've got the full Baco Fundamental Series, you can learn how to do your settings. We have the full Cataract Coach PDF book, totally free. Go check it out, download it, and I will catch you guys next week.